Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. It's super dark tonight, there's no moon, and we're going to be doing some Antlia filter tests. Uh, from On my latest video, I did uh, Antlia install, and I also showed some comparisons between the Antlia filters and also the Astrodon filters. Uh, I guess a lot of people are wondering if you flip the filters the wrong way, uh, what kind of results you get. And I thought, oh, I could test that for you. All I really have to do is just flip my filter wheel around. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna flip my filter wheel around. We're gonna take some test photos and then we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so I have the filter wheel turned around. Um, I was running into some issues turning it around actually because the the motor area here was was hitting everywhere that I put it except for down here. And that's gonna be a small issue for me because I like to counterbalance my electronic autofocuser with the electronics from the filter wheel. It's, it's about the same weight. And when I have this electronic filter wheel sitting over here on this side, it counterbalances the electronic focuser that's on this side. So I'm not quite sure how my balance is going to be, but I'm gonna go ahead and take these images anyway and hopefully we won't get too bloated of stars but if we have some bloated stars or some bad guiding it's still okay now i'm going to take some 10 minute exposures and s h and o if possible there's no clouds tonight like the last time i was doing my tests and hopefully afterwards when i flip everything back around i'll take some more tests shots with them the correct way and we'll see we'll just compare the differences and see what we get. Okay, so we're slewed over to on the talk and uh, it's just doing a plate solve now. I wanna just make sure that it's, that it's in the, the field of view. And it's looking good. I can pretty much tell that this is on the talk right here, even in this tiny little plate solving window. And as soon as we're done plate solving, we're going to start taking some 10 minute long exposures. So I believe we're done here. Let's just add this target as a simple sequence target. And then we're going to do the H. Oh, yeah. 10 minutes or 600 seconds. And we're just gonna do one of those and then we're going to do one sulfur and one oxygen. This all looks good. The only thing that I need to do is set my autofocus because I need to autofocus on that filter and I'm gonna go ahead and start guiding. And looks like the guider's up, okay. So I'll hit play and we'll see what happens. So let's check out our results. Now a couple things happened to me. One, the clouds came through, but I did manage to get the all of the images with my filter wheel reversed, which is a good thing. Unfortunately though, uh, I wasn't able to, by the time I got the filter wheel back on the right direction, the clouds had moved in and I wasn't able to do any more imaging and it doesn't look like I'm going to get another shot until next week sometime. So what I thought I'd do is just compare them with the shots that I took last week. And then there's the other problem where sometime between last week and last night, unfortunately, I somehow managed to knock my Edge HDA out of collimation and you'll kind of see that when we go through these but i don't think that it's going to really affect anything as far as this test goes for the most part so the first thing i want to show you is the ha reversed and i didn't cool the camera so you do it it is a a no, noisy looking uh, sub this is a 10 minute sub on all the talk you know, on the talk is a magnitude 1.74 star, so that is pretty bright. 
And with it reversed, I did notice that I have these funny looking shock waves. Uh, as you can see, that was not on my original image. Um, so let's look at the correct way around when I have the filters in the correct way around. Let me just zoom in on this star. And you can see that those, I call them shock waves. I'm not sure what they really are, uh, but they're, they're not present when you have the filter in the correct way and we will just flip between the two here um, this is the correct way that the filter goes in and this is the uh, reverse of the incorrect way so let's move on to the sulfur and this is the sulfur reverse now i did not see as bad of a or a much of a change in between these the from here looking from this zoom level uh, I, I don't see anything at all now when I really zoom in and again this is reversed I can kind of see a little bit of uh, that same thing going on with these little lines um, and I think that if you were to take a whole lot of these subs and stack them together the this would be a lot more prominent now let's look at the correct sulfur um, that I took last week, but I don't see those little tiny lines in here. So there is a difference, but it's a lot more subtle. So now let's look at the oxygen and you will notice that uh, on the oxygen that you could really see how bright Alnitok is. And because I'm out of collimation, it the light reflected back and that's why you see the halos. I have my picture of Alnitok from last week when I was more collimated. It wasn't still exact but it was better and I didn't have all of these reflections. So I'm pretty sure that these reflections are caused by being out of collimation. But what we really want to concentrate on is the star I don't see anything around the star whatsoever really that, that jumps out at me. Uh, I, I'm not really seeing a halo or anything. But then again, I don't really take uh, O3 on all the talk. Uh, where I do take uh, O3 on a bright star is Propus, and I do have an image of that, uh, the same as from the last video. But So here it is reversed, and then we'll look at it in the correct way. And as you could see from last week being much better uh, co collimated but not exact, most of those reflections are gone because it didn't have something to reflect on. The mirror was, was more straight on forward. Um, but it still was out just a, a little bit, enough to cause this issue here and, and it reflected back down here. But you didn't see the other ones. So let me zoom in on this star again. And I, I guess the only thing I could think of is, is that it's, uh, it's a little tighter as opposed to the more bloated uh, on the talk from the other one. And I don't, I believe that that's because of the collimation and not because of the reverse filters, but I could be wrong. So I'm not really seeing a, a huge difference in the O3 and I'm not seeing an, a real halo either, the, you know, with a defined circle around it so I, i'm still very impressed with the way these turned out now i'm gonna just flip back and forth here real quick but this is the correct orientation of the o3 filter and this is the reversed orientation of the o3 filter and so just to put this back up this this is what i showed in the last video but this is around propus and it's got a magnitude of just over three so it's it's a little dimmer but not much as far as stars go it's still a very bright star and usually causes a lot of issues when trying to image the jellyfish nebula and it's pretty much halo free and you're not seeing any reflections of any kind or anything like that so I'm feeling pretty good about these filters overall it was kind of fun to do the test just to see exactly what would happen or you know what you could expect to see if you accidentally put them in uh, reversed so I really hope that you found this video useful or informative and if so please 
hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. And if you wanna see how I actually uh, originally unboxed and mounted and installed my Antlia three nanometer pro filters, uh, click on this video right here.